Hello everyone. In the last couple of videos, we discussed about the various initial aspects of conditional formatting. In sheet one, we talked about how do you highlight the errors, how you detect the blanks, and how do you colorize the negative numbers. In sheet two as well, we focused more so on duplicates. But this time, let me take you one notch above the current level of conditional formatting case studies. That is, let me jump to sheet three solution. Now, first, let me give an overview. In this data, I talk about the list of all employees, their salaries, the division that they work for, and the rating that they have been assigned. Now, I want to prepare a report, a report wherein the two input cell exists, and in that input cell, if I mention the division name, let's say CDFD, and I press enter, only those rows which are part of the CDFD divisions. And who are get, getting salary more than eighty thousand dollars in a year, those will be highlighted. For example, if I give zero in the second yellow cell, which means CDFD employees with salary more than zero, that means all of them. So if I type in let's say uh, RAD, enter, so all the RAD rows gets highlighted. Now this kind of MIS report I would want to generate where I can have not just one or not just two. Set of criteria, but even more. And the moment the user types in the criteria, the respective rows gets highlighted. Now sounds a bit complex, but it is not. Trust me, if you have covered the logical statements video quite well, you would find this very easy. Only thing is, the first time you might find this a bit tricky, but after two or three rounds of practice, you will notice this is a very very easy technique. How do you prepare this MIS report? Let's go back one step. That is in sheet three. Same data, no conditional formatting applied, and we will see how do you apply conditional formatting that generates that kind of a report. Now, before I go ahead inside the conditional formatting, let me break down the entire thing into two different steps. First step being writing the formula. What is a formula that can help you generate that report? So, as of now, if I were to locate all the people. Who are let's say belonging to division C D F D, and who have salary more than twenty five thousand dollars? How do I do that? Since there are two criteria, I would certainly be using and formula. So condition is C D F D and salary more than twenty five thousand dollars. So condition one, let me choose the relevant cell which contains the salary. Is that greater than twenty five thousand? Now please notice carefully this B four. If I do not apply F4 function key, it will continue to move down, which will give you erroneous results. So I would want that all these salary should be compared to the benchmark salary. Hence, I have locked that particular cell range. So that's question number one. Question number two, after putting a comma, says, is the division name that C8 for the same set of employee equal to the one given on top? Again. Let me press F4 key. Why? So that I ensure the CDFD reference doesn't move down. So if I close the bracket and I press Enter, you will notice it is considered as false. And why would that be? Because this employee belongs to HFD. The salary being thirty-eight thousand dollars. Had this been CDFD, you'll notice the condition says true. So keeping this formula in mind, I will take you to the next couple of steps. So let me delete that particular formula. Before I go to conditional formatting, let me first choose the relevant rows that is starting from from row number eight. Pressing Shift Control Down arrow key to be able to choose the all rows in which employees' name are provided. Now let's go to Home, and within Home, let's access conditional formatting, something which we have already discussed in the previous two videos. Let me go to new rule, and as soon as I click on new rule, the same set of six options comes before me. In the previous videos, we have focused on the second option, which talks about blanks, errors, any particular cell value between, let's say, zero to hundred. We have discussed the duplicate values. Now I am going to talk about the last option, which is the most powerful of all. That is. Using a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, whatever formula must be fed 
in here and the answer should either be true or false now you might be thinking formula in here and what kind of formula that gives me true or false think again if and or is blank is text and all such logical formulas gives you answer in true or false yes so taking that into consideration let me put an equal to sign and since i had two conditions to take care of let me use and formula bracket open now you'll not get any hints the way you used to get in the cells so you'll have to remember the sequence of logics so first question to ask the first question let me scroll to the top of the data so let me begin with the division say if the cell containing the division now why did i choose row number 8's division name why not 9 why because i had chosen the data from row number 8 not from 7 or 9 so let me be very specific let me choose cell number 8 now wait for a minute you notice as soon as i choose this particular cell hfd it gives me c8 in dollars which means this entire cell has been locked fixed it is not going to move down for comparison i would want excel to make it move down so that it can be individually compared to the benchmark division name so to make it move down that means the row numbers can change from 8 to 9 9 to 10 10 to 11 i will certainly remove the dollar before 8 that's the digit now why would i keep the dollar before column c why because it may so happen there is another column uh let's say in a different data where the old division names is provided so i would want that excel does not jump from column c to any other columns later point in time so i must ensure dollar c8 is that dollar c8 equal to cdfd now would you keep uh, this dollars here yes why because you would want the benchmark division name should not shift positions for comparisons so that's question number 1 so be very very careful with the dollars without this this particular technique will not work correctly so putting a comma because now i'm going to ask the next question the next question saying the salary again the same logic i do not want excel to keep it static i would want to make it move down at the same time not jump to any other column which might contain house rent allowances last year bonuses etc so i will press function key f4 once and once more so that dollar b8 is retained now this is depicting the salary of that employee is that greater than the benchmark salary so this locked cell is already posted which is what i wanted now let me close the bracket So these are the two questions I had asked enclosed in the and statement. So you can write any formula which gives answer in true or false. Now if the condition is met, the format that I'm looking to get is let me get inside the format. Let me get inside the fill color. Let's say blue. Okay. Let me test it after I press okay. So C D F D. Yes, I can see that more than twenty five thousand dollars. Mm -hmm, all of them. So, what if I make this two lakh twenty five thousand dollars? You will notice, yes, all the CDFD employees with salary more than two twenty five thousand dollars. So, very very effective technique. Why? Because you in you can include more such questions enclosed in the and or or statement or possibly if statement, provide the an provided the answer is in true or false. And the best part is. Just a quick recap from the uh, oh, earlier videos. If you want, you can prepare a drop-down validation list. So I will take uh, clues from the earlier videos. That is, I will simply copy the list of all the division names which I have. I am going to go to another sheet, paste it there. Now I am going to go to data, remove duplicates. Okay. Now these these are all techniques which I have already discussed in the previous video. My objective is to get a drop down list in the first yellow cell. So once I have reached to a conclusive list which is uh, uh, non repetitive, let me name it. Let's say after choosing this list, I am naming it. Let's say div 
enter so now this list is named as div now if i go back to my statement my sheet i go to data data validation something which we've already discussed in detail earlier data validation allow a list now the list should be sourced from some uh, given uh, given cells yes so to help me recollect what was the name of the list i can press function key f3 so it says you can recall div okay okay advantage see for yourself wonderful isn't it so user doesn't even have to type the division name all he has to do is give in the division name from this list drop down so that was a wonderful exercise on formula based conditional formatting try more such cases just couple of things uh, before i close this video that is if you are applying conditional formatting be very sure about where you, is your starting point that is it is is it row number 8 is it row number 7 why because this is going to help you write the formula correctly and secondly be very very aware of the dollar signs so when you are choosing a particular cell what does this f4 function key mean two dollars once again f4 function key once again f4 key so keeping this into account please go ahead and try this exercise see you in the next video